2016. We are very pleased to have an audience here, many of our volunteer servicemen and women of the community who fire and EMS, and others who are in attendance tonight. So the audience is actually full tonight. Um, this is being taped, it is being broadcast live, and it will be available on the website in about 24 hours, and the minutes are posted similarly in about 24 hours, the draft minutes. First, we start always with the Pledge of Allegiance. I've asked our Annual Control Officer, Mark Harper, to lead us please tonight. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. business tonight is a thank you to EMS, which is good that so many of you are here tonight. It came to our attention, Board Selectman's attention, that last week, I believe it was, there was an incident in town of people, not local people, but people coming from another area who were extremely grateful for the help they received on Lions Plains Road. I'm going to ask John Weingarten if he could sketch the scenario of what happened and the, uh, the letter of gratitude that we got. Do you want me to come up or stay? Sure, the just stand right there. Stand right there. It's on TV. It's on TV. Right right <laughs> the camera to John is right there. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> and you're right too back there. So on um, Saturday, November 19th, the Westchester Cycle Club had an event uh, through town, riding through town. And a um, uh, call went out that responders to come to the scene. Um, this was an amazing response. Um, there were a total of 15, 14 first responders at the scene, two ambulances, a number of policemen. And you know, what's important is that we really appreciate the fact that the EMS, but this was a total emergency service. Uh, of the 14 people, four uh, high department EMT first responders. I'd love to give you the names. Uh, John Braden, uh, John Demishak, uh, Jason Greenfield. I'm not quite sure if he was on, uh, working on police or, or fire at that point in time. And Rob Petpey. Uh, there were nine EMS responders. Um, Joe Singer, Michelle Halpin, Melissa Katz, Cindy Mayer, Carol McGill, Delena Motley, Michael Schlechter, JT Salazzo, who was EMS Command, and Giselle Vogel. Also, our uh, Wilton Western paramedic, Newark Hospital, Todd Smith, was also on the call healthy. So, I mean, it was really a very unusual situation to have so many people responding in town on the afternoon. There were only three riders injured. <laughs> there were a lot that fell down, but there were only three riders you know, injured. Uh, but it did require taking two ambulances and uh, transporting them to the hospital. And fortunately, they were not life threatening. What I, what I didn't mention and, and get thanks to is none of this could happen with the fabulous stuff job of our dispatchers. Um, they were the glue who really held this call together. Um, they kept the communications going. When you think about dealing with 14 people with radios, uh, the police responders, uh, two ambulances responders, dealing with three organizations, they all did really a phenomenal job. And um, I think we're really proud to be part of this really unique team in Weston that has three emergency service organizations that are really serious emergencies all work together as a, just really a single unit, you know, in both um, 
managing and executing really terrific, terrific emergency response. So thank you again. Thank you. To, um, I guess it was, I went to work on Sunday, and um, my email started lighting up with emails from the Westchester Cycle Club, who had learned that I was a cyclist, uh, and were so um, grateful for the way they were treated when they came through Weston, that they, they sent me a number of emails. Um, and the, the gist of them was, um, you know, you must have such a wonderful community because of the people that we met and how sympathetic they were. They weren't just responding, they weren't just helping us, but they were really sympathetic. And um, one of them called out uh, Joe and said, you know, Joe, um, you know, had a tragedy in, in his life with a cycle accident um, and we're so, so impressed that he turned that tragedy into uh, such a positive thing. And um, so I just. <laughs> so I just, I just want to thank you all and, and, and just emphasize what it means to our community um, and to the perception of others having our community. So thank you. And um, I accepted that. I think it's very important that the community pull together for our own members and also for people who come from other parts of the country. This was really extraordinary that this happened in Weston. Yeah, uh, like and I'd just like to say that it, it's phenomenal that every time our first responders are mentioned in the news or, or in some kind of event, there's only the highest degree of praise. And that's especially uh, Impressive, given that you know fire and EMS are, are volunteer services, and, and you guys really are the glue of our community. And speaking for myself and, and, and a lot of people, I understand that sometimes it's a thankful job, thankless job, and I just want to just change that publicly right now and thank you all. Make sure you know that. This is not what you came here to hear a discussion about. This, by the way, is not a public hearing. This is a Board of Selectmen's meeting. We have to go through our agenda. It is not really a time for the public to get up and express their opinions, though there will be time for public comment later on. But with your indulgence, we'll have to go through our, our agenda for items three through eight. So our item three is discussion decision to reappoint Ellen Wyrick to the Children and Youth Commission for a term to end December 31st 2019. Is Ellen in the audience? No. May I have a motion? Uh, having worked with her, I'm, I'm happy to move to reappoint Ellen Wandra to the Children and Youth Commission for a term to end December 31st, 2019. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Without any further discussion, may I have a vote? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, it's unanimous. Item number four, discussion decision to reappoint Carol Baldwin to the Historic District Commission for a term to end December 31st, 2021. Sounds a long way as all. <laughs> business. Um, may I have a motion? I move to reappoint Carol Baldwin to the Historic District Commission for a term to end December 31, 2021. May I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Carol Baldwin is a great asset to this community. She's not only on the Historic District Commission, she's one of the guiding spirits to the shot, the, the shot farm in town. Those of you who know her will know that she's, she gets things done and she cares deeply about the community. So I'm very happy for this new appointment. She's willing to step up and, and continue to serve. May I have a vote now, please? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, it's unanimous. Uh, item number five. 
discussion decision to reappoint John Weingarten as a member of the Southwest Connecticut EMS Council for a term to end December 31st, 2018. May I have a motion? I move to reappoint John Weingarten as a member of the Southwest Connecticut EMS Council for a term to end December 31st, 2018. Second. May I have a second? John, do you want to explain to us what is entailed in your serving on this council? Um, the council basically sets um, uh, both EMS policy and coordinates for the region and coordinates with the state, with the state regulations, and then communicates that back to all the services in the region. It's kind of the intermediary that translates what the state does down into the individual. Is it, co is it co terminal with the COG districts or? Southwest Connecticut, what districts are they including in, in that? In, I think it goes up as far as Stratford, a bit all the way down. So it's large, it's quite a large area. Yeah, okay. the COG is actually District 1 and 5, so it's kind of half it's, of the COG. It's half the COG. But it's all the close towns. Okay. Um, all right, may I call, without, is there any further discussion? Without further ado, may we have a vote? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous, and thank you for being willing to serve. <laughs> Number six, discussion decision to reappoint Betsy Perrine, Maura Rillac, and Jane Young Anglin to the Veterans Affairs Commission Committee for terms to end December 31st, 2018. Are any of those ladies here tonight? No. Well, we all know they do a lot for our veterans, and I'm delighted that they're willing to continue to serve. And may I have a motion? I move to reappoint Betsy Perrine, Moira Relak, and Jane Young Anglin to the Veterans Affairs Committee for a term to end, for terms to end December 31, 2018. May I have a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? Um, may I have a vote then? All those in favor of this reappointment? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Number seven, discuss discussion decision to reappoint Mark Harper as Weston's Admiral Control Officer for a term to end December 31st, 2017. May I have a motion? Uh, I move to reappoint Mark Harper as Weston's Animal Control Officer for a term to end December 31st, 2017. May I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Just again, I'd like to thank Mark for the response. Everybody knows that we had a fairly significant, an extremely significant incident involving a, a lot of animals, and Mark and the rest of the first responders in town uh, did an exemplary job <coughs> in handling it, are still handling it. Uh, hopefully, don't permanently have to handle it, but. Uh, yeah. Let's, let's say what it's about. It's about snakes and birds. Snakes, uh, and, snakes birds. and birds. And okay. a lot of them. <laughs> You're alluding without being very specific, and it was quite an incident that, that Mark handled for us. But he did an amazing job, and I just, you know, wanted to again thank him for, for the response. And thank you. decision to reappoint Helen de Kaiser to the Commission on Aging for a term to end December 31st, 2018. Is Helen in the audience? No. Okay. Um, may I have a motion? I move to reappoint Helen de Kaiser to the Commission on Aging for a term to end December 31, 2018. And may I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? I'd like to say that Helen has been acting as chair for the commission for eight years, and for six of those years, I was on the commission on aging with her. She has kept it a steady, even helm, and moved the, moved the senior center ahead quite dramatically. And um, I'm sorry she's not here tonight. Uh, my kudos to her, and I'm happy she's going to be reappointed. Without further conversation, then, may I have a vote? All those in favor? Aye. Aye, it's unanimous. Now, I'd like to uh, open the discussion decision.
Action Item 9 regarding moving forward with PD renovation expansion project. The, um, this has been kicked around in the community for years now. Uh, the, the community has put aside money for this project. We have enough money to do this properly and do it so that it's a 20 year solution for the PD renovation expansion and bring it up to code. And it also will involve dispatch. This is part of the package that we're considering tonight. The, um, the evolution of this subject has been long. It has been winding. It has gone around in circles, and it sometimes feels like it's still going around in circles, but I think we have a breakthrough. We have talked now to members of all the stakeholders, and um, originally, I was able to do that, and we shook hands, and then the agreement did not hold for a long time. We're still working on uh, making an agreement that will hold now, and I think we have it. So the situation for us now is that PD will be remain where it is with an expansion, and it's a considerable expansion beyond what was envisioned a year ago at this time. So they are acquiring a couple about 3,000 square feet more than we anticipate, and they are uh, going to have a state-of-the-art facility, which I think is something that the town really has been in desperate need of, and it's an emergency situation. If something should happen within the PD, we are liable because we're not up to code. So my, my, my first purpose has been, my first objective has been to make sure that the police get a, a, an adequate facility as soon as possible, and that we don't go on years and years and years with a stalemate within the community. Now, we know what the stalemate has been. The stalemate has been with regard to where dispatch should be located. There are three ways that dispatch could be handled. One, it could be regionalized, not even in Weston. Or it could be regionalized in Weston Centric. We went down that road, we found that we could not engage our neighbors to come to Weston. Another solution is that it be embedded in the police department. That has its pluses, that also has its minuses. And the third solution is that it be an autonomous communications center, not embedded in the police department, with equal access to all the stakeholders, which is part of EMS and police. We are coming to the conclusion, and I believe I can, I, I will ask the gentleman on my left and my right to speak their minds too, but I have the opinion that that is the best solution, that it be an autonomous dispatch, not embedded in police, but sharing a common entr entrance if possible. We have looked at the way this can be done, and we are <coughs> pending the vote tonight. We are looking to do a schemata that will leave dispatch on the lower level on the fire station side of the building. The interior of that dispatch moving into the police department, which is adjacent, is something for the police and for <coughs> the, uh, the architect Hughes to work out. And we feel confident that they can do that in a way that will be satisfactory to the police department. Um, I'm going to hold my conversation for now and allow my, the gentleman on my left and right to speak. Would you like to speak? Yeah, no, I mean, th we've been going back and forth with uh, these sets of plans for, for a good you know, eight months now or something. Um, some of the original plan, uh, there's two different, op there are two different options, sort of three different options as Nina alluded to, alluded to in play. One would have the police station on the upper floor towards the library. The other would have uh, dispatch on the bottom floor pretty close to where it is now, but would be encapsulated in the building, and the third option would be to tear down dispatch and build it back where it is. That option, while, while seemingly attractive of, of rebuilding exactly where it is, poses a problem for the town in that operationally it will be more expensive. You have to have you know, separate distinct systems, you have to just do, do separate maintenance roofs, et cetera. So, um, and also the, the police do use it extensively. Since this has gone on, I've heard from numerous members of, of this audience and the community that there was a strong uh, feeling that everybody needed to, not everybody, but all first responders needed some kind of direct access 
to, to the dispatch center, and we've listened and we've gone back and forth. Um, the police, I know the police commission has taken all these things into consideration. I'm not sure exactly where they are now, but, but my, my opinion is that the best option would be one that A, gets this built, because if anybody's been in that police station, it is not up to code, it is a problem, and uh, we're putting the town and anybody who's in there at risk. And, and two, which is not secondary, is that the all first responders in town have uh, what they consider needed access to it. Uh, you know, the police commission is doing what's right for them in terms of determining what's best for the police department. As a select one, we have to also weigh, uh, you know, other first responders and the other needs for town. So, so I'm leaning in, in the direction that. Uh, the first selectman is that that if, if we can, we should move forward with uh, the solution, which was pretty much what, what Brian had originally uh, proposed. Well, on May 31st, um, the architect for the police department all along has been Brian Hughes of Jakutsky and Hughes, architect of the On May 31st, he proposed two versions of dispatch, one on the upper upper floor on, on the library side and the other on the, where it is now, essentially on the lower level. The lower level one offered a larger amount of room to make it a larger dispatch center, which would be large enough to be regionalized if that ever should happen. Our thought at the time was that if we ever had to go regional, if that was required of us by the state, better we should be Weston-centric. I prefer to keep it in Weston rather than have us farmed out to some other community and we wouldn't know exactly where. So this is still an asset. This is still a plus in terms of putting the dispatch down where it is now, but expanding the size of it. It means that if we ever did get forced, and this is why I talk about a 20-year solution, if we ever did get forced to regionalize, which nobody knows whether it would happen or not, that's really completely speculation, but it is large enough to, be re to be, become a regional center if that should ever happen. That's one of the assets. One of the things the police commission really wanted to see was a single point of entry so that 24 hours a day, if you're looking for police or fire or EMS, you go to one entrance. We believe we can accomplish that on the lower level as well. This is something that again goes back to the architect to, to finish his plans. And our purpose here tonight is to vote on this option and allow the architect to finish the plans so that dispatch is autonomous in the position where it is currently, uh, and in such a way also that the police are satisfied that it serves their needs, and to move forward with this so that we can bring this to the community for a vote perhaps as early as March. So this is what we're working on tonight. What we need, what we have a motion on the table. Well, first of all, Dennis, I have not allowed you to speak. I'm, I'm Sorry. No, no problem. Please, please uh, speak up. Well, I, I, I basically agree with what, what both of you have said. Um, the, um, we have a couple of important community goals here as we, as we renovate. First one, which Nia mentioned, we've got to get this done. I mean, it's just been too long. It's a dilapidated, terrible environment for people to work in. Dispatch is outmoded and, and dangerous um, and ineffective and old technology. I could go on and on. So we really have to get this done. That's number one. Number two, we've got a number of, we've got an opportunity to make it the best we can for the next 20 years. Um, the some of the goals that we had in mind were uh, number one, to have a single point of entrance, 24 hours a day, where, our, where people know where to go. Uh, a visible entrance, so that uh, people aren't wandering around. Um, and um, thirdly, um, there, there was a desire to separate the path for emergency vehicles from the pathways for the public. Um, I'm not sure we're going to be able to accomplish all those goals. Uh, we're going to have to make some compromises. Um, to me, the, um, the, the 
biggest downside of having the dispatch um, up here was, as Nina said, it's embedded in, into the police department, and we traditionally have a, uh, an independent dispatch group. Um, so moving it down to where it is, or, or retaining it where it is, has a big benefit in that regard. Um, I think it presents some challenges in terms of uh, a 24-7 single point of entry, but what I would like to do, and I, I think my colleagues agree, is find a way to get that done where, it's, where, it's, where it is currently, but it also has 24-7 access. So, so that requires a redesign. Um, and I'm, I'm in favor of spending the money to redesign it to accomplish those goals. Thank you. Um, I, I'd like to put in a few um, words now for our first responders. My father was a first responder, and I remember growing up, being in the dining room and, the, and in the library, the alarm would go off and it might be a holiday, and my father would strap on his belt or whatever his equipment was, his boots and off he'd go. I believe that this volunteer spirit in our town is part of our culture, I believe it's part of our history, and I've been willing to make certain um, allowances for uh, not having the perfect solution for everybody in order to preserve that volunteer community that we have here, which is present here tonight. And I thank you all for coming out. Now, we are ready. I'm going to open it up and ask, does anybody have any questions? So no. procedurally, what we're doing now is we are voting to appropriate money to, to pay the architect to do the final design, and that design will incorporate all, all the aspects that, that have been mentioned here tonight in order for us to then go forward and get uh, specific pricing. You need that step done to do that. So that's procedurally what we're doing. So along this pathway, there'll be multiple places for people to comment, and I'm sure when you guys see the, the uh, newest design come in, if you have thoughts or, or, or ideas, I, I'm, I have no doubt you'll share your, your, your feelings on it. So the procedure right now, however, is even a little more specific. We're looking for cost estimates for the design where it will be down below, with dispatch autonomous and um, on the lower level. So well, for that, we, think we, we, we were told by the Kuzke and Humes we would need to appropriate $5,000 to get professional cost estimates. The schemata will be done, and the cost estimates will be done, and we will then have something that hopefully will be ready to go. Wait, I'm confused now. We don't have a design for the project that we just talked about. That's correct. So we need a design, so. That's correct. Okay, how much is that gonna cost? It's 1,500 bucks. Okay, and and the rest is for the cost, right? Okay. So we, we got a fifteen hundred so covered, both. and then the five thousand for the other. Yeah, the fifteen hundred covered, and he 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 still owes us nine hundred dollars worth of work. So okay. Perfect. Imagine that. So we're okay. So really, what we're doing now is, is the motion is to authorize a supplemental appropriation the amount of five thousand dollars for the purpose of engaging the firm of Kuzki, Hughes, and their consultants provide a detailed cost estimate for the proposed police department and communications center renovation and expansion. That's our motion. Okay, but I, I don't, that doesn't cover design, so. Can, can I just clarify well, that? Yeah, sure. Design, we don't need is not to cover. So. We don't need to supplement. Okay, got it. I just wanted to clarify something. It's my understanding, part of the reason why these guys are here, is that part of, of what you're stating to us now is that it's the intention of the first selectman to endorse a design that will incorporate the features that you suggested, where the communication center will remain autonomous and generally located where it is, and that these funds that I guess you're asking for approval of through the voting process is to uh, uh, bring that forward uh, for cost purposes and a tighter design. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we had a design before, but it had a regional dispatch in that location. So now they're going to redo it with a non-regional dispatch. Same location, roughly there. That's great. So, but, 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 it, but it did not have a 24-7 entrance on this side. That's what needs to be designed. And so if that can be designed, if we, if we all like the design, if it's within our budget, 
that's what we want to do. Thank you. And um, I think we can do it. I'm very hopeful. I'm very sanguine about the situation at this point. It's been a long road to get here. So um, I've, I've asked, I've, I've made the motion. May I? Or would somebody like to repeat it? So, so moved. <laughs> so so moved. moved. Second. All right, seconded. Seconded. Dennis seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're done. We've got it up. We're on the road. There you go. Thank you.
as a result of the meetings that we've been having, the Board of Education Facilities Committee took it up, and Elise Major, who has been extremely instrumental in, in pushing this forward, um, announced yesterday, or the day before yesterday, that the Board of Education has approved uh, the, the uh, sidewalk plan, a, a sidewalk plan to integrate the schools and the, and the downtown area. So that's a major breakthrough, um, and we've uh, appointed a couple of people from the committee to press forward with this. We've got um, a set of plans which were created uh, when uh, Tom and others um, applied for a grant several years ago. Uh, it's a very good plan. It probably needs to be tweaked a bit, um, but um, we would like to move forward with that, and I'm going to be um, respectfully and humbly asking the first selectman to include some funds for this in the uh, in the next budget. Uh, so that, that will be a discussion we'll have to have because it doesn't come for free. But as I said, I think it's it's a great project and well worth it. And there's potentially some steep money we'll have to look back into that, right? Well, provided there's steep. If it <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I'm not being facetious. No, no, I just like that. Yeah, I understand whatever goes on in the state, but historically there had been. And just to clarify, we're talking about sidewalks in the immediate vicinity of the village district and the school. Because Correct. sometimes when people talk about sidewalks, it's a much more expansive concept, and we're talking about a very limited, specific purpose in this case. Exactly. And I think we're talking about it as being tiered and tiered in the school's parlance usually means uh, divided up and done over a course of several years. So the first, the first thing the schools would be interested in doing is connecting the four different schools. So we have the middle school with a little sidewalk in front of it. Then you can get to the high school. There is a sidewalk. Then from the high school, you can sort of get to the middle, to West School. And from the West School, you really can't get to the elementary school, which means you can't really get from the West, from the middle school across to the public library. Kids can't go to the library after school because they can't walk it. There's no way to walk it without going across parking lots and through grass and, and, and um, playing fields and so forth. So if we talk about sidewalks, tearing it, we're talking, first of all, connecting the four schools on the campus. The other aspect of this sidewalk project was to bring it down school road to the stoplight there and create a passage, a, 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 a crossover of Route 57 to the center that's safe. Because right now, the sight lines at Newman's office, which is that stoplight at School Road, the sight lines are terrible. For cars coming from either direction, kids trying to cross there, they're not very visible for her. There's not enough for a morning. Especially it's dangerous. Snow. And with snow and ice. And the, the state, unless they run out of funds, had proposed expanding that stop, stoplight and having on each side, on each direction, a passing lane, which would just take a little bit more of the road, but it would widen it. You'd then have two cars coming at, from each side. You'd have two cars or four cars in a row, and the sight lines would be even worse. So the idea of the sidewalks, once we get the four schools connected, would be to make, make them come down, make, make a sidewalk come down from central office, which connects to the main sidewalk through campus from coming out of WIS, and I hope people understand my, my map in my mind. Um, but we'd have a sidewalk that go down central, from central office down to Newton's office, down to the school road, create a new way of crossing over to the center so it's safe. And we're not sure how that would look. The state, that's a state road. The state would have to give us direction on that. That would be the next thing that could be done in terms of tiering. The last thing would be to come out at, at the um, public library, bring a sidewalk down in front of the public library, in front of town hall, all the way down to the corner of the stoplight in front of 48 Northfield. If we can. Yes. If we can purchase 48 Northfield, the original thought when we were trying to purchase 48 Northfield last year was that would then give us, we would own the entire pathway for a sidewalk that would go from the schools, encompass the municipal campus here, which is Town Hall, 
police and stuff and fire and the library and go down to the corner and go wrap around on Route 57, have a safe crossover to the commercial district, and then go back up into the school, up at School Road, and, and connect with the, the campus side. Of and give the seniors in the senior center a walking path where they can go around the outside of, of Route right. 57 around the uh, uh, Northfield Road and go straight to the library and come back and, you know, and it would be a path that would clear. It makes a lot of sense for a lot of reasons, and you're right. And, and one thing I want to throw out there, um, this might be an opportunity to look at crowdfunding, too, for whatever we can't get f from other places. And whether or not we can, we may want to, I know we've sold, not sold, but sponsored bricks. I know we did it in Bisegli, where we had you know donors and sponsors. It, it, it might be, be a, a good opportunity to look into that to raise some funds. I know they did an amazing job with the lights at the football field. So, yeah. Yep, absolutely. And, and uh, the tiered approach might help with that. If, if we could start with a sidewalk on school road that uh, people could see and they could see how much it improves people's lives, uh, that we need more money to, to bring it into town, it might generate interest. Yeah, I, I mean, as somebody who walks a lot, I can say that it would not only be better for the people walking, but frequently, if there's snow and you're on the street, people have to stop, slow down, swerve around. It, it, it impacts traffic, it impacts people's convenience, and it certainly impacts safety. So it's, it's a great idea, it's been a long time coming, and I'm glad at least something's moving on it. Just as an update, we did something with the state um, earlier this year called a road safety audit, with the idea that if we did that, it was done for free, and it was to determine that we have a safety issue, because once we can prove we have a safety issue, there is no safe place for mothers with strollers, there is no safe place for bicyclists practically, um, there is no safe place to walk, it's curvy, the sight lines are bad. So they determined that we do have a, a safety issue in this town, which was a preliminary step for applying for grants. So we've, we've started this process. Margaret. Yeah, I was member of the public who happened to be at the very excellent meeting of the Strategic Planning Committee. And I had some thoughts at the time, and I haven't really been able to put them together. As you were speaking now, it occurred to me, I'm one of those people who likes to do things, uh, certainly when, whenever you're discussing with pedestrian and anything, you have to see where people really actually want to walk, to go. It's just because you put the sidewalk there it doesn't mean that that's where they want to go. So I was thinking if you faced it with the school road part that you could get in, and then instead of having the hassle with the state of Connecticut and the Department of Transportation or whatever, use an access way through the town property, whether it's you know wherever it is on the school property, then through the town property, town hall, whatever, and then you would do the crossing at the light here. It's, it's 
going to improve, improve the town immensely. Um, and the third piece was a survey. Um, our committee was planning to do a, a scientific survey in order to assess what uh, residents want in terms of uh, development in town, amenities, sidewalks, um, senior uh, uh, housing and services, etc. It's a critically important part of, of our mission to know what the community wants. Um, and at the same time, the Planning and Zoning Commission is uh, starting the process of uh, creating its 2020 uh, Plan of Conservation and Development. And for that purpose, they also need to do a survey. So fortunately, the, the timing comes together well. We've decided to combine our forces to have a single survey of the community. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission is seeking a, uh, an, a, an appropriation or a, a budget item in next year's budget uh, for approximately 60% of the, the cost of their project, which will include a survey, and we'll just uh, tag along so we won't have any costs. So that's a good thing. Smart. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. You guys have done an amazing amount of work. That's been great. It's been a year and a half. And it's staggering, so thank you for the whole dedication. Thank you, your team, too. Thanks. Is there any other business to be covered for this meeting? Tom, will we cover all the bases? You're out. All right, we have a motion to adjourn. So moved. May I have a second? Second.